Hi, today I'm going to be doing something really different with you. I'm meeting up with Andrea Page because I've just, I'm have just i in one of her juice fasting and yoga retreats in Amsterdam this week for myself and it's been fabulous. And so I wanted to explore with you about hunger, fasting and hungry ghosts. So Andy, thanks. This is yeah. really nice to be able to chat a bit about it. So what I'd love you to talk about is what do you see as the key things that come up for people um, when they might when they think about juicing? The mm -hmm. sort of like maybe the contrast with juicing and hunger. Mm -hmm. and what thoughts and what obstacles might come up for people about this? Yeah, I mean, and it would probably link almost back to the work that you do because it's all based on nourishment. It's all based on where are we living from, uh, what is growing us, if you will. And it's really easy if you think about it like a plant. What do you give a plant? What is the soil it's planted in? Right? What nutrients are there? What is the microbiome like of the earth, the microbiota? And then, of course, the outer inputs, the air, the sunlight, etc. And so we can understand that very easily with a plant. But when it comes to a human being, right, we're all stuck in the head. But it's the same paradigm. It's what is the soil we're planted in? What environment are we in? So you just said to me before we started that when you're in Bali, it's easy to juice cleanse. Mm. So when you're at home, could you never imagine doing a juice cleanse from home? That kind of thing. When you look at obviously the microbiota of the soil, this is what indicates its ability to intake the nutrients. I mean, ask any botanist this or any kind of soil scientist and they'll tell you, yeah, one, two, three. We're the exact same our healthy microbiota, which requires not only probiotics, but prebiotics, tons of fruits and vegetables, that is what will allow for the absorption of nutrients. It's that simple. From there, of course, fresh air, water, sunlight. These are the inputs that the plant needs. We are no different. Water, air, sunlight. And so uh, then you get into companion planting. Good thing I had two. <laughs> and you see, like you might know if you're Italian, Basil grows really well next to tomato. They fix the nitrates in the soil and they, they grow brilliantly together. No surprise. Well, who do we grow together brilliantly with? Who are we surrounding ourselves with? What kind of space are we planting in our life garden? And so when you ask me about um, juicing and, and we were talking a little bit about the emotional side of it, it's super simple, but we don't give ourselves time to think because we're always putting input in. That would be like me watering it too much, putting too much fertilizer, messing with the soil all the time rather than just letting the plant be. And so really cleansing um, any kind of fasting, whether it's a juice fast or whether it's a water fast, it's letting the body be with the elements, the air, the water, the sunshine, right? And then the fixed healthy soil base. And from there, everything gets along, the body heals itself. This is the foundation of the work I do as a natural hygienist. Um, and I practice as a naturopathic doctor in the realm of connecting people back to their health. Because the normal medical doctor is a doctor of disease. I am a doctor of health, which is very different. And not a lot of people have had exposure to that because doctors don't know a lot about health. They're masters of disease. And so it depends on, on what you're looking for, but often fasting is the fastest way to heal, not only physically, but emotionally, mm. psychosomatically, right? and interpersonally. It's just like it brings us into a state where we're like, oh, okay, everything's okay. So what are some of the key differences um, people would see if they did a juice fast for themselves? Yeah. Uh, what would be the results? And, and I guess also what sort of length of time, which is often an issue. So it depends. I mean, there's no one answer for everyone. I think that everyone would benefit from fasting, bar none, organ failure, heavy dose of medications, or under current hospitalization care, um, where the doctor probably wouldn't support it and they could be pumped with any medication at any point, or anyone with an active eating disorder or severely underweight. Those are definitely contraindications to fasting anyone else, it would tremendously benefit, especially when you're looking at juice cleansing, because you're still eating, your cells are still absorbing nutrients, it's just the digestive tract itself gets to slow down and shut off. And so 
that's like a miracle. And for me, it's been a big awakening over the past couple of years because I'm traditionally, I'm a water faster where there's nothing coming in, which is very different. Mm, it's much more extreme. Yeah, and the healing happens even faster. Mm. But when we go into juice cleansing, I mean, this is something that my teachers didn't have 100 years ago. The founding natural hygienists, they didn't have a juice extracting machine, mm. right? Maybe they could press grapes or press oranges or things like that, which they would. Mm. But to the level where we can juice leafy green vegetables, things like that, and truly get that dose of blood cleansing, it's a new innovation really. And so um, what would be some of the benefits that, that we would see? I mean, they're endless. It, it's things that I could speak of, right? A re renewed sense of connection with the body, allowing the digestive system to rest, any kind of dig digestive system disorder, be it colitis or acidity or um, slow bowel, whatever it is, right, can only be healed through fasting. Because mm, they give it a break. Exactly. I mean, it's interesting now because we're halfway through this juice fast that I'm doing with Andy. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. <laughs> now, so four days into it, um, I don't feel hungry at all. Haven't at any point. Um, and we're having just two juices a day, um, green juices at the moment until today. And I mean, it's... I'm not trying to do the same workload as I normally do, yeah. you know, so I'm aware of actually giving myself space and time, but I really feel the difference um, with my digestion. It's like, it's calm, it's relaxed, there's nothing going on, and then I'm aware much more of the rest of my body. It's mm -hmm. like, it, it feels really good. And uh, so it's, it's a light feeling, you know, so therefore also slightly spacey, but it's like doing it in a certain place where that's okay and you're not expecting too much of yourself would be my feeling about like this is a great time for me to do it yeah. just sort of not having too many other things on but then also there's space to come back into myself and that uh, is a real it's like a refresh and a reboot um and as i mentioned before mercury's retrograde at the moment for another we're only part way into it, so it's almost it's more than two weeks. So a great time to step back into ourselves and to refresh and renew. Mm. Um, and I'm feeling stuff that I'm sort of reviewing and refreshing and just think it's not tangible yet, but things I'm sort of coming fresh to some of the ways that, that I'm moving or working or different things. So do you find that sort of it flows out and affects people's life? 100%. Always, 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 always. I mean... There's so much there in what you said, because if we're asking about like the first question that you've asked me, if, like on behalf of the audience, I feel like it still hasn't been answered there because we're, we're talking in concretely because there's so much happening. Yeah. And so concretely, what happens when you juice fast? Healing of any chronic or acute disease, a reboot of the immune system, right? A clarity in your mind that you haven't experienced perhaps ever, an ability to just say, what am I doing with my life? And, and so that guides us to the space that you talk about. Now it's funny, this word spacey, right? we, we have a negative connotation for mm. it because you want people to be corporate and on the ball and organized and present like that. But spacey, it's full of space. And mm. so after you said you're feeling spacey, then the next sentence you said, I feel like I have space to come back to it myself. And so mm. it's all this spaciousness from not putting in all the input constantly. And so it's really, it's like, it's the most obvious thing we could do in our DNA. We're programmed to go through cycles of feast and famine and feast and famine. But today is constant feast. And so it's so important to step back and give ourselves the space to induce the famine, right? Not in a sense of lack, but in a sense of rest and space. And so, yes, by all means, this entire self-reflective process is for me just as important, if not more important than the juice. Mm. And so it's um, it's sometimes difficult to describe the work I do because it's not just like I signed up for a juice cleanse and I'm going to get juices. If there's group work that goes on, there's personal reflection that goes on, there's so much that's in it. There's energy work, there's awakening. Now, I mean, you're well versed in most of the things that we've been presenting this week, but if you can imagine someone who's never had exposure to alternative ways of living, mm. what an awakening it would be. And for whomever comes and whatever exposure they've had, 
it is an essence of, of, of exploration where everything happens faster because you're fasting, you're not distracted. And so the spaciness also is a, an innate presence in the present moment where it's like, that's how I felt five minutes ago. I might feel completely different five minutes from now, but right now this is where I am. It brings you, fasting brings you into the present moment. And so the antithesis to spacey, which was that corporate on the ball, is that not because your body is physically in the present moment, but your mind is suspended in either projection into the future or learning fear from the past. Right? And that's what makes you organized because you have that straddling outside of the present moment. Mm. And so if fasting quickly brings you present into whatever physically is going on or self-reflection where you even get to be so present that you leave the body and are able to look from a higher picture perspective. Exactly. And it's that um, there's a quality of mind because, of course, our brain and our digestive tract um, are similar, long curly things, but they have so much effect on each other. And so... What I'm noticing is as the digestion is having a break, um, there's like um, openness that's happening with the mind. Um, it's not that it's actually going off to different places, but more that it's like a, a waiting and that there's possibilities. Yeah, I love that. Um, and things that are intangible. So it's like doors open that you don't walk through them yet. Mm -hmm. It would be sort of how it feels. Mm -hmm. Or that you can see them there, but you're just feeling them. So it's lovely, to, and also we're doing a bit of an e-tox at the same time, so an electronic detox, so dropping emails, computers, mobile phones. This, and that's huge because that's like food. It feels like modern food. Yeah, it's, it's chemical. Mm. And this, is, this drives us in this conversation down an alley that is um, more trafficked today, let's say. People really like to go and explore there, which is um, understanding addiction. So, so far in our human experience, right, we've had certain substance use and substance abuse, which is the normal category of addiction. If it's a drug, a hard drug, a chemical drug, or if it's alcohol, mm -hmm. and the withdrawal from that, getting away from that, whatever. But the biggest addiction that humans experience is the addiction to food. And all of us have it because we simply today don't know where our food comes from. And so it's going to spur something inside of us that is, you could think of a scarcity mentality. We have to take a deep breath. The bells are going off. That's the rule in my house every 15 minutes. So in this scarcity mindset, right, of addiction and, and um, feeling like I need it or I want it because I don't have it inside of me already, that's because we have wholeheartedly followed the mantra food is fuel. And that's all we've known. We've only known sourcing ourselves or receiving energy from calorie in, calorie out. And this is so key. It's especially where people, so many people are on the edge of burnout yeah. and exhausted. And it's like, then, and it's like, okay, I've got to have food because yeah. then that'll get me through the next thing that I'm doing. And what do they turn to when they're stressed? They turn to foods that are high in calories. So your pizza, your French fries, your ice cream, sure. whatever it is. Yeah. Bang, 1,000 calories in a slice of pizza. Your body never has found that in the natural world. And so in the reptile brain, what that does is it's, it's, it stirs a secretion of serotonin, right? Wow. Or dopamine, happy mm. chemicals. Mm. Specifically the shot of dopamine, which is the same thing that happens when you snort cocaine. That's what you get addicted to. When you get a like on your Facebook thing, same thing happens. So this is all what we're eating. We are addicted chemically in our brains. And of course that reflects emotionally because I'm happy when I have those foods. And so my job is a very difficult one to bring a bunch of people in and take away what they're most comfortable with and what they love most, take away their baby blanket and still hold the space for them to be safe to do this personal work without their baby blanket. Mm. And yet that's when the most work can be done. Cause it's, I was thinking about that, what the Chinese call hungry ghosts, which really ties into what you're saying. And hungry ghosts are, um, they're basically spirits that have a blocked in the throat. Basically, they're hungry all the time, but they can never be satisfied. And um, the Chinese traditionally would put out offerings and things for them. But it's this 
the hungry ghost is something that we can all have inside us and it can we be do. that thing that drives us we do. so i was just wondering your thoughts on hunger and hungry ghosts this is totally the addiction to food and i have one of my clients who i'm working with now who's precious she's she's in my one-year transformation program which is um it's the only way really that people can work with me one-on-one -on -one, uh over a long period of time and it is this entire let's look at every aspect of your life not intentionally but when it comes when it crosses the path and so she's actually way ahead of schedule in terms of uh, her fasting. She, she experienced her first fasting last month. She did tremendous. And then as she started to eat again, as people normally do, they learn so much in that space and they think they've healed so much, but then they eat again. And that in and of itself is as much of a learning as was the fasting. Mm -hmm. And so when she, she started eating again, she said, there's a creature inside of me. Right? So that was her hungry ghost. ghost. Yeah. And everyone will feel this. I mean, we've all been dogs slobbering at the bowl, fighting each other off, right? Wanting the food. And some people more than others, depending upon their astrological influences, perhaps. Um, but we've all had that desire because it, again, comes from the scarcity. We have no idea where our food's coming from. And so when we look at evolution, we were always the ones that would come out and gather or hunt or take our own food. It was never a grocery store and a restaurant. That's perhaps the most disempowering thing for your health is a restaurant. You have no idea what ingredients are in the food, what the sourcing of it was, when it came. What, mm. We've made food into an and art. And who cooked it or created it. 100%. The energy that went into that. For yeah. sure. For sure. There's so much that's unseen. And so it is truly the most disempowering thing that we could do for our health. And more off perhaps spurs addiction. It, it distances us more from truly understanding the paradigm of nourishment. And so the other side of what I was saying before to food as fuel is what I teach. That's what live for vitality is. It's live for this aliveness, this pranic force, the chi that's inside of you already and that you can learn to harness. <laughs> You can learn to build through certain practices and lifestyle techniques. And mm -hmm. when we start to wrap ourselves around that aliveness and rather than always look outside of ourselves for something, whether that's your coffee because you need a boost or whether that's this because you want to feel that way, we're always drugging ourselves essentially. Mm -hmm. And even plant-based food, even food is a drug, right? It has a chemical effect upon the body. Yeah. And so it's not until we can really just stop, and that's why water fasting itself is such a dense practice, but I'll make a disclaimer that mm -hmm. I don't actually recommend water fasting in the modern world unless you're intelligently supervised and you're doing it in a totally off-grid scenario. So, yeah. Whereas yeah. we were doing this fast in the middle of Amsterdam. And that's why we're juice fasting. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why we're juice fasting with the canal outside. And it's very beautiful and we have belts. <laughs> um, but it's in the middle of a city and then so sometimes if somebody um, is wanting to have a do a juice fast um, do you, what do you do you suggest any changes in their normal pattern of what they're doing or yes location? for sure I mean it, you have to decide if you're doing a juice fast or a juice feast so I told you I recently started running juice cleansing programs online and that for me has been like this amazing answer because I can share with so many more people and often um, people will think, oh no, but I could never have this kind of transformation online. They should see my July group because off the charts, the amount of transformation that people have because they still have community, mm. right? They're still being exposed to the information to so my key. lectures. And, and then they're embedded in their everyday life. So it makes it that much easier to take home than would be a, I'm flying to this place for a retreat. Um, it's integrated mm. and so the personal transformation has been huge and I think I shared with you that two people out of the 20 that fasted last month on my online cleanse went on to fast the entire month 28 and 30 days I, I was just Amazing. like astounded I didn't even know till the other end but that shows me how much they've been empowered and they've made it work for them and Fasting is truly an experience where you learn from your own experience. I can tell you here that you'll feel clarity, you'll feel lightness, you'll you won't feel hunger. Mm -hmm. I can tell and you I that. can vouch for all of that and but and until I've only done a few of them. Yeah, yeah, until you're six, seven days in, right, you don't really feel that. It's simultaneously the most rewarding and the most heartbreaking part of my job. People plugging back into themselves mm -hmm. when they come to day six of the fast and they say, To tell you the truth, I didn't think I could do it. 
right? That breaks my heart because that, that, sh that really truly shows how much lack of self mm. someone has, how little they're filled with themselves, right? We could call it self-confidence or whatever, but that's the necessity, the addiction to food. If they don't, if you don't think, if you're sitting there right now and you don't think that you could ever go a week without eating, right? What is that saying about our relationship with ourselves? Exactly, because it's such a thing of self-care, you know? It's like when I do a juice fast, um, this is the, doing this one with Andy's the first time I've done one in a guided situation and it's been fabulous. Mm -hmm. And with your amazing yoga, it's just added so much more and your insights. And before I've done them in Bali and places and I've done them at home as well, but not for as long, but it's that, um, and I've just lost track of my thoughts, but it's about coming back to, it's actually knowing you can do it. And um, if, you, if you have faith and you have support and you have some structure, um, it's actually easy. Yeah, it's super and you, easy. And you feel good. Right, we simplify it, don't eat and show up. Yeah. That's it, it's like it couldn't be easier. And the most of the fast happens here in the mind. And so it's it's really, it reflects back to you, your relationship with yourself at the deepest standpoint about how much you trust yourself, how okay you are with yourself. Mm. Um, and if those hungry ghosts come up sometimes, and they can come up with food, but hungry ghosts can come up in all areas of our life, mm. alcohol, tobacco, but also in work and, and our relationship with electronics mm. and our relationship to other people, of course, it's a huge hungry ghost area of where we're trying to it's like we're perpetually we're trying, trying to fill us. something in ourselves. Um, and you might have worked with me on clearing some of that. But this is a really interesting way to go at a really deep cellular level is mm -hmm. what I'm seeing with the juice fasting. Mm -hmm. um, it's like there's certain, some hungry ghosts have to be cleared in some other ways. But this is like going back to, it feels like going back to a very primitive level of helping our body. Yeah, for sure. Rebalance itself. And it takes a long time. It's not one week fast will not get so primitive. Right? It's a lifetime mm. of cleansing to inherit, to have inherited lifetimes of toxicity on a cellular level. Mm. But it's never just physical, right? Within the cellular toxicity, which is easy to release, right? The energetic, let's say the energetic toxicity might be a little more difficult for someone to release on their own because mm. they're so attached to it. That's why someone comes to see you. Yeah. But if we, on a physical level, it's like knowing what button to press, like we said in Chinese medicine, it's just like pressing buttons, the acupressure points. If we know what button to press physically to spur a process of detoxification in the physical body, the result of that will also be emotional healing, detoxification, spiritual reconnection. Mm. And a really, at such a level, like it really shifts things. And with hunger, I was really interested when you were, you were talking about hunger and how many days it actually takes for us to get really hungry. Because I think for a lot of people, the yeah. fear of hunger is actually a, a big reason why people yeah. don't want to um, right. uh, go fasting. So, so the, word, explore that a <laughs> the word hunger is one that's so misused, especially if you think about it. I'm dying of hunger. Or I'm, I'm hungry to death. These phrases come out of us and without thinking about them, right? Uh, few people have ever actually truly starved to death. Um, often it's not hunger, it's malnourishment. Mm. And so if we look at genocide or a horrible situation like the Holocaust, right? That was malnourishment. A lot of people were actually eating bread or something every day or every other day. Right. But when you, you get that malnourished, your cells have depleted everything, that's when you're at that point. And so what is that point? How long does that take? Because that's going to tell us what true hunger is. Right? True hunger comes 40, 50 or more days on water alone. And on juicing? On juicing? You can go easy 60, 90 or beyond mm. three months. Right? Those are nutrients that you're taking in. And it's such a long time because it's so easy to think that, um, you know, oh, wow, you know, if I, I mean, we know we're actually getting nutrients on a juice. Um, but just that cutting down of solids and having less 
yeah. um, can trigger a bit of panic in the mind, but it doesn't in the body. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you, you get past those first three days, you learn to trust the physiological markers kind of stabilize, and then it's a whole new world. And after a certain point, it's like, you just want to continue going. I have a lot of people who come to the end of the week, if it's a week long retreat, and they say, I never want to eat again. Right. Why do we eat? This is a question that people often have around day five, day six. Mm. And um, seeing the other side of life, it's like, it's just like you have to know everything. To know day, you have to know night. To know good, you have to know bad. This is duality. To know eating and fully understand and make peace with eating, you must know fasting. Mm. That's yeah. key. Yeah. yeah and, so and it's equivalent to sleeping, really, because we're giving yeah. the body a break. 100%. Whereas normally we're not giving it much of a break. Um, there's too much food and then a lot of people eat late and then there's not even the fasting time at night yeah. that it's long enough and sleeps eaten up by digestion so they wake up exhausted 100% mm. um, what I was saying before about about the concept of hunger that cellularly on a cellular level it's something that happens 40 to 50 days into a water fast right juice fast especially juice feast can go much, 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 much longer. I mean, if we go off the deep end and we get even esoteric about it, esoteric, whatever that means, then we look at, um, like Dashimin's work, I'm sure you're exposed to breatharianism. Mm. People who are choosing not to eat anything or once they're hydrated, stop hydrating more because they're getting vital life force energy, prana from the sun, often from sun gazing. And this is possible. It's not my path in this lifetime, um, but, we've seen humans do it. There are mm. sages in India who haven't eaten or drunk anything in 70 years and all their vitals are thriving. And so when you learn to nourish yourself from other ways, right, which is what we, the first step to doing that is stopping, relying on things like coffee, sugar, alcohol, whatever, and then go into maybe a cleansing lifestyle. So you start to eat more plant-based food, which is closer to the sun. Sun photosynthesizes plants. Plants give food to us. Right, and then you take one step further, maybe you just have the fastest digesting food, fruit, for a week, only fruit for a week, simple. Cucumbers, tomatoes, those are fruits, botanically. And then, whenever someone's ready, maybe that was a six month exploration of going through all of that, of getting off of the addictive substances, mm. coming into more of a cleansing lifestyle and diet, simplifying, and then they say, I'm gonna try out a juice fast, or a juice feast. Juice cleanse. So what's, what's the difference between a juice fast and a juice feast? Juice feast is having two to three liters of juice a day or more. And when would someone do one versus the other? So when I, so because living in Bali, when I was living in Bali and working a high power job where I could work 12 to 16 hours a day, mm. um, fasting was not a practice. I, I always said for many years in my lectures, fasting and rest, are inherently inextricable. Like you cannot have one without the other. You must rest while fasting. Well, that's because it was more on the fasting paradigm. Mm. Which is like a couple of juice, small glasses of Two juice a day. Two glasses of juice a day yeah. or water fasting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas the juice feasting paradigm, when you're actually taking in calories, because if I'm having two to three liters, like there, know, there's, there's a lot calorie of calorie load there. there. Yeah. And so in drinking that, I'm still having calorie input my digestive system still gets to shut off because there's no solid fibrous matter, then I actually am able to both reconnect into my source of vitality and energy where I was doing a two hour yoga asana, intermediate level Ashtanga yoga practice every day. Mm -hmm. And it was fine. You had the same. I had energy more energy than, than I would have normally had. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone so far in the sequence so fast had it not been for fasting without the inflammation in my joints and my body and all everything blocking me emotionally, physically, mentally. It's like life just gets easier. It's tapping into superhuman potential. And this is where I'm going truly with most of my work in my career, flow state and superhuman potential. Right? And the okay. yoga, the astrology, all of it plays into that. But juice feasting then afforded me the ability to continue working uh, that high power level and I ask myself in hindsight and because I did another juice feast this year that was a bit of a different experience I was doing it the last part of it in Amsterdam which is a totally different climate from Bali which poses yeah, the environment lunch. right yeah. um, I was asking myself was it that functioning on adrenaline or cortisol from work and that's definitely an important reflection and I'll have to do more experimentation there but in general 
choose feasting is for people who still live a high power life and want to continue to. Mm. So if someone's listening and they're saying, okay, I'm not like, I'm not meant to get into the world of fasting, uh, because I'm scared that what if, like, I actually, I just, I work with, um, high power entrepreneurs now, like the, um, uh, a lot of the American based, uh, Tony Robbins kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like very very successful wealthy entrepreneurs kind of thing, and uh, we just held a cleanse online, and fewer people than expected enrolled. And the guy who was who I was doing it with said that he thinks it's because those people have so much to lose in mm. their work life that they can't afford to be out a day. Yeah. And so what is that? That's fear. Okay. Well, all we're doing is learning how to thrive in a different way. It's not like we're learning how to be weak and sick, and so. If you are needing to schedule your life, like I was trying to schedule when would be my first three days of the fast, and I actually wanted to start it before you guys got here so that I could be full power when it comes four and five. Um, and that is what I would schedule over a weekend. For example, you start day one on Friday, you're at the office, maybe leave early at 3 p.m. You don't even notice that you haven't eaten. And then you go home, you have Saturday and Sunday as your first two, three days of the fast. Mm. And then after that, by Monday, day four, it's like things have somewhat stabilized and you can go on through the week. And so um, that's how I would recommend that people start to integrate it in their life. Um, I have a ton of free fasting lectures online on my podcast, um, Live for Vitality podcast on iTunes or available from liveforvitality.com that you can listen to to begin to learn. And you'll hear me say in those podcasts that it's a lot like a muscle. Fasting is like a muscle. So the first thing you lift is a five kilo weight and you lift that a few times until it feels really safe and comfortable and easy. And yeah. then once it's easy, then you go for the 10 kilo weight. You want to keep it easy because then it gets caught in the body as being something that you can do. For sure. You never want to take something up and sure. then fail at it and sure. then have that feeling. For sure. And it's building little by little because if most of the fasting happens here, no. right, if hunger resides here and when someone comes on a fast and they say to me oh andy i'm hungry it happens all the time right <laughs> where it's like we're a little puppy without food feeling sorry for ourselves that's the first and best mistake you can make <laughs> that when they come to me and say that i say okay well where is it show me and they'll say like maybe they're rumbling intestines or it's an emotional desire where they can't explain it right because we haven't felt true sensation of hunger. What we say hunger is, I'm hungry, is I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling like I'm not giving myself enough space of me time, I'm feeling antsy, I'm feeling like I'm getting less than everyone else and I want something for me, I'm feeling like I need a dopamine shot, I'm feeling a little depressed and I'd like a pick-me-up from all those calories that I'm gonna eat in that chocolate cake after dinner. Right? Whatever it is. And we're feeling thirsty. So, and thirst. Yes, yes. Was thank you. Ask you, um, if you like, how many liters do you suggest people do yeah. on an external fast? I know what we're doing here, but I'd like you to chat about it. A bit. Yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant. What is you. rather important? Brilliant that you bring that up. I don't know how I forgot that. Is the tenth uh, what hunger really is? Um, yeah, most of all, hunger physically is actually thirst. Yeah, which so is if such it a is, great thing to understand. Yeah, if it is a true physical embodied sensation, and it's not just in my mind, because in someone's mind, when they come and they say, I'm hungry, and I ask them to find it in their body, they can't. It's often in the mind. It's habit, right? And in the mind, okay, we can say that in the emotions, energy and motion from the mind, the psychosoma of they're actually craving union with their partner, whatever it is, that is the true hunger. It has nothing to do with food. Uh, not those ones, no. And so no. in terms of water, though, uh, if our cells are asking for anything more than often than not, it's, it's water, it's hydration, because that is the river running through us, and most people are stagnant, and that stagnance is what causes disease, as we know from all of the Eastern medical sciences as well as from the natural world. And so I do recommend that people, on average, everywhere, drink three liters of water a day, and that number comes from the amount of water that our body uses and loses simply by waking up in the morning. And so it's our responsibility to replenish that. Now, however, people in the modern world are severely chronically dehydrated. And there are many people that theorize that most disease comes at its root from dehydration. And then with water, 
um, that's an empty from the city. Yeah, but it's like city water mm -hmm. that might be full of chemicals mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, should people basically get filtered water? Um, I recommend what's your that, thoughts on that? Yeah, that we are meant to be drinking mm -hmm. spring water. And so this is why my job is, is hard. Now I shouldn't sit here and say I whine about my job is hard, but I have to not only say eat more fruits and vegetables, drink more water, I have to say try to get ones that are local, organic, and fresh. Right? And try to get water that's spring water. You yeah. see? it's So it's like baby steps. You have to start somewhere. If you've never drunk water, just drink your city tap water. Like, yeah. it's okay. Maybe <laughs> filter it. And don't necessarily go out, I would suggest, um, and buy in a lot of plastic containers. Because that plastic is probably leaching into the water. Plus, we have major pollution problems from plastic. So. Yeah. A lot of what I do, and you know this because you've heard me say it, is, is get people to think conceptually. So whereas everything you've just said is 100% true and super important, the problem with health in the modern world is that we are so disconnected from our body and awareness about all of it that we're oversaturated with this pop health knowledge about don't drink from plastic bottles and don't do this and don't. So then you have this oversaturated individual disconnected from their body showing up at the gas station because they're hungry. And it's like, what are their choices? Yeah, and then a plastic bottle of water is great. Right, exactly. I've, I've, I've heard that I shouldn't have plastic water yeah. and oh, I shouldn't have that and nuts shouldn't be roasted and this and, and so it's like, where do we go from? And so my intention is truly to give people the foundations, mm. right? The foundations that help. If that's the water. Drink water, mm. right? And then when you come back from my more advanced classes, right, you've been coming for a while and I know you're experimenting with hydration, then we can say, all right, make sure you're drinking spring water. Make sure you're drinking that on an empty stomach. Right? Make sure you're drinking it out of a glass container. Make sure you say I love you to your water before you drink it. Mm. Yeah? Make sure you don't drink it all at once and gulp it. But those are more advanced concepts. And I, I feel that a lot of the reason that I've had success in my career with people truly jumping off the deep end to change their lives like that is because I give the foundations first. It's not about changing your diet and putting in a few mantras every day and this and that and all this stuff that's up here. Yes, that's important. But if you're not pooping, if you're not giving your body and your cells restoration, if you're not giving cellular revitalization, if you're not hydrated, yeah. right, you cannot, will not ever heal on any level. Because these things up here, whereas they're incredibly valuable, they build upon the foundations of health. And so this is what I did a TED talk on last year. Um, is, is those foundations of health because they're so simple and they're things you know. You know you should be hydrated. No one doesn't know that. But mm. who actually practices it? Because our body is, you know, it's a body. It's elemental. It's part of the planet. Yeah. It needs some basic things, yeah. you know. Exactly. And some, once the basic things are taken care of, then we can take care of a lot of other things. That was great. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, so on your website, if you're interested in exploring more about what Andy does and, um, you have some podcasts about fasting, do you, on your I have podcasts website? about everything. Yeah. yeah. And that we have so, Adam's Processing season two and three right now. So there's a lot coming out in season four will be an interview series with me and, and influential leaders in, um, and really the, the, let's say superhuman activation field. Mm. Um, who are really looking to get more out of life. That's what I work with. Um, I take people who think they're healthy and show them how much healthier yeah. they can be. Yeah, but there's always, exactly, it's exciting. There's so much more levels that we can all be at. We don't have to start with a problem. We can actually just want to yeah, enhance exactly. our and this, life more. This was my mission for many years, and to an extent still certainly is, to empower people to redefine health, to not only understand it as lack of disease, because that's what it is today, right? You're healthy because you're not sick. Your health is defined by illness, hmm. rather than being defined as waking up every morning feeling fantastic, jumping out of bed, and being in flow state where you're, you're ready and excited and active. And um, so your question though, where do people find out about me for now? The website's liveforvitality.com. Just Google my name, Andrea Page, P-A-I-G-E. And there'll be a bunch of stuff coming up. And um, I put out a lot of social media, tons of free content on Instagram at Live for Vitality and on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Andrea Page N D as in naturopathic doctor. And um, yeah, I, fabulous. I, and I highly recommend having <laughs> a look at it. She's uh, got lots of fabulous information and 
ideas if you're interested in exploring this at all. Um, because I think it's like there's many ways to work with our health, but it's, it's there's some core things that we need to do at home and food and water and juicing um, is really a key part of it. Yes. So thank you so much. You're welcome. That was great. Great. <laughs> so Cassandra Punita James here, type, this is your my latest Typhoon Surfing blog for you, helping you to surf all of life's waves. And next week, uh, next fortnight, I'll be back in England and showing you something a little different. Ciao for now. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Typhoon surfing. <laughs>